Hey, Steven Yanni here at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts, doing another High Octane Walk Around. Now, I was born in 1964, which makes me 59 years young. But with that said, 64 was the official launch year of the Ford Mustang. Now, people call it a 65, but they started building them early in 1964 to match the demand, which they knew was going to be crazy, and it was. But this is a 1967. This is the first year for the redesign of the Mustang, and it goes beyond the skin. Now, this one, of course, is what we call a Mustang 2 plus 2. It's the fastback body. And of course, we all know that Mustang was available as a coupe, a fastback, the 2 plus 2, or a convertible, very um, flexible body style. So there was basically a Mustang for the single person, the newlyweds, uh, the sun lover, you name it, Ford had a Mustang for you. But the thing about the 2 plus 2 is that the name 2 plus 2 is very literal. Why? Well, it refers to the seating capacity. If you look inside, and we'll see on all Mustangs, we have, of course, seating for two up front. There's the two. But on most American cars, the back seat takes three people. Not on the two plus two. Two and two. That middle in the seat, that's not meant to be sat on. That's why the Mustang Fastback, or two plus two, and the convertible are the only two Mustangs that were truly two and two four place people, unless you want to sit on somebody's lap. Now, Ford did have a Mustang hardtop, which actually had a wider back seat, which could take three. So that was a two plus three, if you will. But the whole point of that narrow back seat was these thick, beautiful fast back B pillars. And in fact, these are wider than anything on a uh, hard top. So the two plus two is more than just a name on the fast back Mustang, also known as the sports roof. Uh, and one thing too about the Mustang fast back is that the fast back is what makes it so sexy big panel of glass, beautiful sweeping roof line here, very, it's like it's going fast in the back, if you will. But the only downside is a very narrow trunk opening. It's all good, but compared to a convertible or a, heart, a sedan, which has a much larger trunk, trying to put anything large in this is a challenge. Now there was an optional fold down uh, partition. You could put things into the car, skis and stuff like that. But let's face it, the Mustang Fastback was not a car for practicality, it was a car for fun. Now of course, under the hood on this one, let's find out what's making this one even more fun than a base car, the V8. And as we make our way to the hood of this Mustang, we have to remember that the Mustang and the pony car aesthetic in general was all about a long hood and a short deck. Now we saw that short deck lid, microscopic, but again, the long hood on the Mustang accentuates the power and allows the stylist to do really nice things with the sheet metal. The way the front overhangs, the grill is recessed all the way back in there, almost a foot, and that's all just to make this thing as sleek as possible. Again, long hood, short deck, but what's under that hood? Well, let's lift it up and have a peek. Yeah, classic Ford small block. Uh, this car was born a C code, which means the fifth digit of the VIN has a C for the 289 two barrel. Uh, that was then, it's still a small block. Now it has an Edelbrock aluminum intake, painted blue, but that's a performer RPM with a small Holly type four barrel. So it's probably something a 300 horsepower small block, nothing wrong with that. It does have tube steel headers, which are far better at exhausting the gases than would be any cast iron exhaust manifold. And of course, the tube steel headers were not available from Ford, but they bolt right on. Of course, it is true that Shelby did offer steel tube headers in 1967 and earlier, but, uh, but again, we have just a nicely hot rodded uh, small block Ford. And speaking of this engine, you want to stick around at the end of this video because we're going to fire it up. You get to hear this small block run. It's a great sounding engine. Other details seen here, some modern touches, the aluminum radiator, which is not something Ford made, but hey, it works. And the cooling fan has a little pusher, this electric guy right here, which makes certain that cooling air makes its way through. And for all else fails, here's the mechanical fan here, which does the job. So you have three fronts of defense against overheating. But the big question is, what transmission are we looking at? A four-speed or an automatic? Well, let's go inside for a peek. And inside this beautiful two plus two, Again, the standard issue front bucket seats. There was a split bench for those folks who must have or wanted to have three across, uh, but something you'll never find in any Mustang ever is a column shifted transmission. Uh, although Camaro and Cougar and Firebird could be had with column shifters if you really wanted it, every Mustang came with a sporty floor shift in keeping with the pony car theme. Now this one again is a 1967, and in addition to an, a wider engine bay to accept a 390 big block, 
A lot of safety features were introduced inside the car. This thing here in the middle of the steering wheel might look like a breakfast roll or a bun, but that's actually Ford's nod to safety. Uh, that's a cushion. The idea being that you wouldn't cut yourself as badly if you had a crash with this big foam structure here. And of course, the uh, dashboard pad here is deeply hooded, and this is flexible. And again, it was all about occupant protection. As you know, Detroit started to get serious about keeping people safe in accidents. And of course, today we have airbags, rollover, cameras, all this kind of stuff. But the humble beginnings of occupant safety seen right here. As we step back and admire the 2 plus 2 or a fastback or sports roof body styling, we'll see an awful lot of scoops on this car and vents. Do they all work? Well, the answer is yes. These ones here on the B pillar do work. In fact, there are vents inside which can be slid that then allow air from inside the cabin to exhaust from here to freshen the air. But we come down to the quarter panels right here. These elaborate metal structures here don't do anything at all except add a, an element of sex appeal. Although on the GT350 and GT500 Mustangs of 67, they were somewhat functional. And getting to the front of this, the hood, got to say, the hood vents on these are functional. We can see right here, they're open to the air and what they would allow to a certain degree is air, hot air to escape and pressurized air. And they also provide a place for the optional turn signal indicators right here. So the Mustang 2 Plus 2, a nice blend of form and function going hand in hand uh, and a great example of American pony car at its, at its best. If you like this car, be sure to check it out on the High Octane Classics website.